Welcome to Pinhole Quilting. I'm Liz, Pete's behind the camera. This time I have actually given him a haircut. For those of you who've been watching us on a regular basis, um, welcome back. And for those of you who are watching this for the first time, I hope you enjoy what we're gonna to present to you today. This is from our Pinhole Quilting showroom uh, in Pershaw, which is actually uh, in the county of Worcestershire in England. And um, it's a lovely day here. It's actually not raining. After a very, very hot week, we've been enjoying some fantastic classes that we've been doing with Abigail Sheridan de Graaf, BEM. Um, more on that later. Uh, anyway, we really welcome everybody who's coming um, to watch us here today on Facebook. We've also got this on catch up so you can watch it on Facebook later. We'll have it on our Facebook page, but also on our YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, we really encourage you to do so. It really helps us actually um, with subscriptions and things. We're not at a thousand yet, but it actually changes things um, for us a little bit if we can get to a thousand subscribers. So press the subscribe channel button and um, Pinhole Quilting will be elevated up the rankings if we can get to a thousand subscribers. So please go ahead and do that. We'll be having some incentives for you to share that subscription with people later in the year. Uh, so what are we going to do today? We're going to have some things on rulers, um, otherwise known as templates, and it's a really essential thing for quilters, particularly when you're long arm quilting. And so we'll talk about that in a little while. But in the meantime, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's been happening here at Pinhole Quilting during the last few weeks. Um, and uh, for those of you who are watching last week, you'll know that we had some classes. Um, classes have resumed here at Pinhole Quilting and it's an essential part of buying a long arm that you invest in the education that we offer. And when you get a long arm, like our Moxie, our lovely Moxie that we have here, and have we got anybody, has anybody joined us yet? Has we found... have a, a, a number of people who've joined us already. We have... Um... I'm hoping Val was there first. Uh, Val wasn't first. Val, Val is with us though and Val says that she loves the quilt and the cross with the cross hatching in the background. Well spotted Val. We're going to be talking about that. So we've got Susan Lees with us, Carol, oh, lovely. Be Carol Susan. Beely. My sister Susan. Susan walked in the, in the showroom this week and she said, I feel like it's my sister who I'm watching on a Saturday morning. That was very kind of you. And it, is, it does feel like, we, always we do talk about the Handy Quilter family and it came really from visiting Handy Quilter in the States when uh, Mark Highland and his, his wife Suzanne, my dad and I and Alan, our engineer, um, originally went over in 2010 um, when we took over distribution uh, with the Cotton Patch. And um, it felt very much like that sort of extended family. And it's something that we really sort of try to encourage that sort of ethos of it being like a family, that you're sort of part of this lovely extended family that Handy Quilter encouraged too. So lovely. Yeah, so we've got Maya with us. Hello, Maya. Who's I been hope on your class. tension and everything on your moxie, I um, hope you're feeling more confident uh, after your class. Joe Lovell, Jane Morley, Hi, Lindsay Joe. from Switzerland. Unless Lindsay is over in the UK. I think she was visiting somebody over in oh, the UK at the moment. Oh, yes, because you were, you were sent uh, parcels to be picked up. Yes, Jane Morley and... Hello, Jane. Sally Bottright, Liz on Marshman. The South Coast and Jane. Sally Botwright. Yes, it was lovely to see you, Sally. Fantastic. I hope you're enjoying um, your machine after having visited. Jane your Ritchie Moxie. and Kate in Northern Jane, Ireland. Jane, yes. And actually, I still have a blog post to do, Jane, on, on your lovely st um, studio. It's beautiful. We had some lovely comments, didn't we, about Jane, Jane's setup and questions about the IKEA units underneath your frame, which we knew we'd get, which is why I took some photos. Although we never actually got the cat to get into the little home that your cat seems to love underneath your quilt frame next to the IKEA units. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll do, I will do a blog post, but actually life has been busy both at work and outside of work, um, to be honest. So uh, Sandra and Derek are with us. Ka oh, lovely. Hi, Sandra and Derek. Carolyn. You've had some nice weather, haven't you, in Northern Ireland, I think. <laughs> and Joyce in Massachusetts. Oh, hi, Joyce. It is usually with us every Saturday Joyce morning. Linehan, yeah? Yes, and uh, I see Lindy's on as well. Lindy, I think, is on holiday in this part of the world. She's coming to see us on Monday. Yes, so. dropping in her machine for service. Nope. That's one of the things that we offer is, you know, if someone... We're actually quite lo well located, aren't we, Pete? And by well, prior range... For us, we are, yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's really, very convenient for we're, us. We are so well located. We are three <laughs> minutes from home. It's like the most convenient location <laughs> we can find. I, we are, we're amazingly well located. We could cycle here, actually. 
We do use electric vehicle wherever we can. Um, but yeah, we are about 10 minutes off the M5, and um, which makes this handy for sort of, actually we're not handy for everybody, of course we're not, but um, people... <laughs> That's the point I was trying to make. He was sorry, I knew what point he was trying to make, but um, I was sort of sidestepping that, that point. We're not handy for lots of people, but for, for those people who are going up the west side of the, of the UK, um, going from uh, maybe the southwest up to the northwest, we are quite handy. Um, you stop off at Gloucester Services as you make your way up, um, although that hasn't been quite as good. But hopefully, post you know post lockdowns and stuff, Gloucester will reopen and become what it was. T Bay is still pretty good. Um, anyway, I'm just telling you the places that we stop off at, um, and you, then you can pop in <laughs> to fill old quilting, drop off your machine, and then pick it up on the way back. So that's what that's what Lindy's doing, and also. Um, <clears throat> Who's, who's our other lovely lady who was very color coordinated when she came to visit us? Um, She's dropping a machine in in a couple of weeks. Yes. That is. It. That is. Lindsay. It's Lindsay, isn't it? Yeah, Lindsay. Lindsay from Portsmouth. From Portsmouth, that's right. With her, she's got Navanti, right? Yeah. So Lindsay in Switzerland is still in Switzerland. She's okay. got a friend who's visiting the UK. Ah. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah. Right, I'm just threading up my moxie because we're going to do some live demos. No pressure, no pressure. Um, and I see I'm that just... Gail is on the line. Gail, thank you for doing that demonstration on our behalf. Oh, fantastic. And also to Val, this is something that we, we do when we have customers who are potentially interested in a machine, but they're actually not as local oh. as we are to our showroom. Um, occasionally, customers kindly offer to demonstrate their machines. Well, we ask them and then they say yes. Um, so, so. <laughs> we don't, we don't uh, that can, so Gail. The order of the, um, yes, the organization is not, oh yes, you can go around to see Gail. Yeah, if she's in. So Gail did a demo of her machine and um, Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge is going to go ahead now with their purchase of an Amara. Which is fantastic. And thank you to Val as well this week, who the very same afternoon that I contacted her was uh, demonstrating her machine to somebody up in Stockton. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, because we're not actually very convenient for Stockton. And uh, Val says that Steph was with her for over three hours. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But there turned out to be another link, didn't there? You made her too welcome, Val. No, yeah, no, no, but no there turned out to be another link. So that was nice, wasn't it? Oh. Nikki says, thank you for the workshops this week. Nikki, thank you for your little gift. To you. That was lovely. No hint there to any other customer. Right, that's, I've just cleaned and oiled. We just finished our workshops and I hadn't cleaned and oiled. This machine, this is always what we do when we put in a new bobbin. I'm just kind of like reinforcing the process of what we do. So Carolyn, Carolyn Clark says that her Avanti is just coming up to its 10th birthday. So that's really interesting. Aww. So Carolyn, you were one of the earliest. Little birthday cake, Carolyn. <clears throat> so that's I mean, lovely. Handy Quarters have been sold in the UK by Liz since 2010. So. I remember Carolyn coming to that. I think I've got a photo, do you know, Carolyn? If you come into that open day, I'm just going to do a stitch test because this is also what you do. Yeah, now I'm um, just. Can I just go back to the Anglia Ruskin University thing? So this is. I'm really. I'm so excited about this because um, we've got um, a. Now it's a fusion. It's the older version of the Forte in at Manchester Metropolitan University with Pro Stitcher. We've got at uh, Yale College in Wrexham, um, they have an Avanti with Pro Stitcher. And now we've got at the um, Anglia Ruskin University, thanks to, very, really, really appreciate it, Gail, because you obviously, in fact, I spoke to, the, to um, one of the people who'd come to visit and she was so impressed by, by you, Gail, as well as the machine, um, by how much you'd um, done in the time that you'd had the machine. and. Um, you know, that's, that's really up to, um, very much down to yourself as well, because, you know, how they're going to use it is that it, this is about the students using it in really innovative ways. And we talked about a few of our customers who are using 
um, the machine is per perhaps a bit like how Deborah Howard would. We've got a piece on the wall that's the um, organza, or organdi, organdi, organza. 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 Yes, it's organza. Sorry, my head isn't quite right today. Organza, and it's through a single layer, um, just like with thread painting, and then some paint on the top. And that's the kind of thing. And I talked also about quilting with leather, and we can, you know, we can talk about all kinds of stuff. But it's brilliant. And then maybe in due course, they will get into like laying out pattern. We, we talked about this. I just kind of wanted her to, to think about the future, you know, where you could lay out, they're going to get a 10 foot. They can lay out pattern pieces. They can design patterns, literally do sleeves, bodices, lay it out and have it well, pre-stitch, cut out and then cut it out. Amazing. This is the kind of things that you can do, which is very exciting when you get into that kind of thing. So Bella, who was on the uh, one of the feathers classes this week, says that she did six hours of feather practice yesterday. Yes, go Bella! How oh, amazing! Now story. that was great, wasn't it, Bella? Because you were on the previous week's class. You booked for the feathers. We were delighted to see you again. We had such a buzz in that class, um, and uh, it was a really fun class. But I've made some notes um, from that class, and I only mention a few names. <clears throat> So for those people who are here, um, it was lovely to see in particular, I will mention names actually, um, it was lovely in particular to see Lynn and, and Patricia, who met at a previous class when we weren't even here. So it was over three years ago, we were at Worcestershire Wildlife Trust before we had this unit. And Lynn, in the intro, said that she wanted to quilt upside down. We all had images of her hanging from, <laughs> hanging from the ceiling by her feet feet at the time and we all had a laugh about that. For Patricia it's a lot about confidence and we really hope that we instilled some more confidence in you and I know we discussed a lot about what you were doing on your Avanti. Um, massive thank you to Nikki and Caroline because it's always such a joy to see the two of you and the fact that you're local to us and we always have such a, such a giggle when we see you and I know that with Abigail as well. Um, and uh, we've now I'm now going to put a little note on it so it's now Caroline's fan. Um, you've made a huge amount of progress in two months, Caroline, and um, I'm so impressed with the amount of texture that you were able to create with no wadding. Um, yeah, th there was a bit where we hadn't actually added the wadding because we cut it in sections and then we add in more wadding because we, we, like, we do the whole section of fabric for all of our classes. Um, anyway, Caroline had run out of wadding, hadn't noticed and wondered why she wasn't quite getting the texture that she was expecting. Um, we had a lovely group with Di, Susan and Maggie, a sort of sit-down trio. We could call them our sit-down sisters. Um, and there was some fantastic work going on. I will post some photos. We've already spoken about Bella, uh, who came last week and booked the follow-on. Um, and, oh yes, and I, I love the fact that on, on our sit-downs that Susan uses the timer on her sit-down um, to make sure that she, she takes the bread out of the oven. Very useful, <laughs> very useful feature yeah, that no good. one else has ever mentioned um, in any of the manuals. So, uh, um, so. Couple, a couple of other bits of feedback. So Sylvia says that she bought her machine from your dad, Liz. Lovely man, is what she put. Yes. So, Sylvia McKenzie? No, no, Sylvia Grayson. Oh, yes, of course. Sylvia. Now, Sylvia, were you, did you, were you the person who walked in the shop and it was on a grace frame. I think that was that was you possibly. And oh, I didn't see. even have the studio. That was that that was really early days. So yeah. Jackie in Ireland morning. Jackie, she's mm. recently got her Capri. Yes, Jackie, lovely. But we've been busy with Ireland at the moment. There are two more machines that have gone to yeah, Ireland fantastic. this week. So. Absolutely fantastic. We will start demoing soon. But it's it's just what's lovely about the Facebook Live is just the fact Til that... Sylvia says yes, you've remembered correctly. So. <laughs> Do you know, I can actually remember, because I have this kind of mem this weird kind of memory, I can actually remember whereabouts in the shop that machine was when you walked in. I can almost remember, because I was in the shop. I'm pretty sure I was hanging around the shop. You probably didn't notice me, because my dad does kind of like, you know, make the big impression. He's still making the big impression. We had some people around yesterday. And you know, he has this really, he has this really interesting way about him. So this lady came in <clears throat> and um, my brother and I were talking to her and then my mum and dad came in and my dad was sitting down and he, he, he has this way of having a dramatic, not a dramatic pause, but he has a pause and uh, her name was Sam 
and uh, he said, do you know about Blink? And she looked at him and she said, no, I don't know about Blink. And he said, Blink, it's 15 seconds. And in the first 15 seconds, you've already made up your mind about somebody and the rest just validates that. And that's what I've always used with people when I recruit people. Completely not the way that you recruit people whenever you do things now, but it actually is what we kind of do. We actually, do. and it was just really interesting. He still has that sort of way um, about him in terms of building rapport with people. Anyway, sideways. He, he has a natural charm, your dad. He does. Which, uh... He built up a natural charm with Sam. It was fascinating to see at the age of 88. <laughs> he still does that. Mm. Right. It's been okay. a lot of talking so far, Liz. Better get on with some stuff. It's been, it's been lovely <laughs> because what Abigail and I said, and also when we were saying goodbye to some of the customers yesterday, oh gosh, it's been fantastic. It really has been fantastic. It was lovely to see Di. Di was here on Thursday. Gosh, that was only two days ago. I felt quite emotional actually, because for the first time it felt normal. And Abigail and I were saying, wow, it was almost normal. Should I, can I mention Abigail for a moment? Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't watched it yesterday, but uh, yet, but um, yesterday Abigail was on the BBC news channel um, at nine o'clock and it's about 29 minutes in, I think. 9.27 it 20, starts. 9.27. Um, she was being interviewed by Victoria Derbyshire because um, Abigail was awarded the British Empire Medal in the Queen's Birthday Honours, as I posted on our Pinnacle Quilting page, which is absolutely amazing accolade. And I know, I know there were so many people, as I said in the last um, Facebook Live that we did, um, but it, I didn't watch it. I was uh, busy with my parents, but Pete, Pete watched it and said, you know, it was, it was really excellent. Well done, Abigail. You know, it was a real break a leg moment, wasn't it? You know, to be live with Victoria Derbyshire, they were in Coventry, I guess they're doing like City of Culture in, in Coventry. And, um, you know, that's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's not only amazing to have, have been awarded that, but, you know, there's a lot of people put forward for those awards. So it says a lot about um, the huge achievement and what it represents for all the people that were behind the, all of the making of PPE. So well done. Well done. We really appreciate the fact that you're working with us as well. We are mere mortals. You are a BEM. So congratulations absolutely wonderful achievement. We're going to talk about quilts. Yeah, we're finally going to get to talk about quilts. I'm going to talk first of all about this, then we're going to talk about really work. You'll notice the quilt behind. I'm going to sneak past here. Right, this quilt is from my parents way back when they used to go to the States. They would, as well they want, they would come back every now and then with a quilt. So this is um, a quilt that they brought back from one of the Houston quilt shows. They would quite often go and do a bit of touring. There's no label. It's just quite annoying, really. On any of the quilts I um, brought back from their house last night. Um, but what you can see, I mean, it's a beautiful uh, feathered star, right? I'm not, I, you know, I haven't even had time to look it up, but this would, to me, this is a feathered star. It's got, I mean, in terms of the quilting, we've got feathered um, sashing, beautiful little star, posts, feather. We've got cross hatch, very traditional, lovely little feather um, uh, center here. Nice sort of, you know, straight line quilting here. It's all hand quilted, beautifully done. I mean, beautifully executed. This could all be done by, obviously by, by machine quilting now. <clears throat> it's been folded up, so I hope that this uh, this drops out. So the idea is that we're going to, uh, and this, you know, this is very much of its time. This would have been purchased in the 1990s. Um, I mean, it looks to me, yeah, that looks like a. So this looks like a probably a Concord um, floral, very typical 1990s, and just planes. Um, these look like one of some of those sort of um, uh, sort of border type fabrics that they made at one time in the 1990s. Anybody got anything to say about it? 
just share, you know, just let me know. I, all of the quilting lines are done in um, a, a, you know, com complementary, the same color, basically. So uh, slightly darker, actually. Typical of hand quilting, you know, when you quilt, it is creating a little bit of a channel. So you don't want something that's slightly lighter. And, and I can see the color of the quilting thread is in all cases just slightly darker than the color of the fabric, which is the, the right thing to do. Because that way it shows, but it doesn't, it's, if you did it lighter, it, it doesn't look quite right. Um, back, you can probably see. Yeah, that's very effective. So I think the message from this is put labels on your quilts, everybody. It is. There's no labels on any. Tragic, tragic. Even if you're not planning to do anything with your quilts, it's a, it's a, it's a story of your journey in your quilt making. Yes. Put labels on your quilts with the date and your name, yeah. at the very least. Just, uh, I think the thing that I, I can really take from this is, obviously I'm looking at it here, it is beautifully done. The other one, I'm just going to share two because this is... Uh, <clears throat> Chris Hillier says she labours all her quilts. Well done, Chris. Good Excellent. Good job, Chris. This one, no label. Um, no. I, I think they call, I think they said Amish star. I don't know. I haven't looked it up yet. I'll look. I will look. But it's all about value. It's like Rubik's Cubes to me. Value. Beautiful. Again, beautiful quilting. Interesting. Interesting choice of colour on the black. It's actually a pale blue. A pale blue grey. No, it's a grey blue. It's, it's a grey blue on the black. It's a grey blue. The quilting is all like a steel grey blue. So in that case, you've got a lighter thread on the dark. Yes, it's ever so effective. Look at the back, you'll see it more, I think. Isn't that lovely? Now the thing from a machine quilting or from a quilting point of view is I don't think you'd quilt it like this if you were machine quilting because the quilting is, I don't think you would, is all just inside. So you'd have to stop and start each one. I don't think you'd do it like that. No. Okay. All right. So, you know, hand quilting, machine quilting. Ouch. <clears throat> so um, San Sandra suggests it might be a version of a carpenter's star. Oh, you are probably right. Actually, that rings a bell. That's amazing, isn't it? It is actually you saying Rubik's Cube, Pete. That is really a good point. So now, Bella says quilts deserve a name too. They do. Oh she, yeah. She's working on a Cambridge blue for her Cambridge cousins. Oh, that's, that's a great idea. I love that addition because you could, I'm, I'm sure Bella, this is what you're thinking is that you play on the name of the design and then you add to it, which is a play on the name of the, either the fabric range you used or the people that it's for or whatever. That's uh, a great idea. And was that cotton that, um, I think somebody's asking about that star quilt, Liz, is that cotton? Because it looks as if it's got a shine no, it's to cotton. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely cotton. Cotton fabric. Yes. Yeah. And the, and the thread as well, you think is cotton? Yeah, that, it looks like, um, it looks like if, um, to me, it's sort of Coates dual duty, which might be um, that little bit of, uh, what do they do on it? It might have a bit of polyester in it. Something like a specialist hand quilting thread. Carolyn Clark says that several of her quilts have been named Gritted Teeth. <laughs> you haven't enjoyed doing those then, Caroline. Carolyn? <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, you do make me laugh. You do make me laugh. 
And the next one will be through quit, gritted teeth. Right, let's talk about rulers. So rulers, what do rulers give us? It's almost like what did the Romans do for us, right? This sort of the Monty Python-esque version of for quilters of what do rulers do for us? Well, rulers give us... Everybody who's been to the classes this week could probably do this bit, right? Ah. Only if they were listening. Only if... Yeah. I'd be, I'd be devastated if they weren't listening, Pete. So we, we need to... Uh, if we've got a stand-up long arm, we, we use a ruler base like this one. I'm going to demo this on the, the Moxie. So the ruler base uh, is what I fitted to this Moxie. And the, because ordinarily the, um, the long arm has quite a narrow uh, free arm, that means it's sort of quite light. You don't want excess metal, really. And the Moxie one actually also comes with the, the fittings that enable it to go on. So the others, like the Avanti, the Simply 16, etc., actually have these pre-installed. But with the Moxie, you get these pieces, so you just need to screw these in. The screw holes are there, but it comes with this plastic and the screw. You put those in place. Make sure your threads, if they're already there, are just lying on the free arm. The number of times I've left them hanging and then can't move your thread. So take it from one who's done it. Place it so that this bit here is over the top of the first, what's it called? A lug? Lug. I call them lugs. Yeah, yeah. lug. Lug's a good word, isn't it? Yeah. And then push it back and it just slides in. Let me just get one of the older ones. There's uh, a river lug in Herefordshire. Which, pardon? There's a river lug in Herefordshire. Yes, there's Lug Wadeen. That's double that? G. That's a place in yeah, Lug Wadeen, yes. Herefordshire. When you get the ones for the Simply 16, the Avanti, you actually get this kind of... Does that come with a cover as well? Like this? I can't remember. Can't, we can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting to that age we are getting to that age they all have like an etched number so the moxie's got a 15 on it and it might or might not have a brown cover on it you can take yours off we've left ours on because um you know they can get a bit too scratched um but the, we've put demo on ours as well you don't have to have that on it either and they come with like velcro that you can add so that it's snug so these, this one is slightly different, but the same principle. You put it over so that the lug is like that, and then you push it back. You want it to be firm. Make sure it's pushed all the way back. You don't want it to wobble. Some people leave the ruler base in place all the time. The downside of that is that on certain machines, not on this one, because this is actually designed to work really well with the Moxie. Note it doesn't hit this bar, but on certain machines, you can actually have it that the ruler base hits the bar so you might not want to leave it in place all the time but they're relatively easy to remove even when your quilt's in place you can just loosen off the quilt sandwich and lift this up you also need to use it with a sure foot the sure foot is um, used instead of the regular foot here's the regular foot yes yeah, just question the focus that's that's the standard foot we got the sure foot, yep. the sure foot there just a much deeper profile. You can see that. There we go. Just wanted to focus on my hand. Mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. Much deeper profile. Makes everything so much safer. Comes in a little box like so. A sure foot. There's a really good video on YouTube where Linda Jackson, our handy quilter ambassador and educator, shows how to use it. Um, it's well worth watching. And uh, she uh, covers it really well, showing the benefits. The moxie, the orientation of the moxie in terms of the needle and the foot is the needle is in front and the foot is behind. On some of the machines, the needle is to the right and the foot is to the left. So just bear that in mind that when I'm demoing, it might look slightly different on your machine. Just having um, <clears throat> a little bit of coffee. Nice. Now, rulers, very important. This is called a kinetic foot, it's a hopping foot. It, what it means is that when your machine is taking a stitch, it's holding the fabric. 
This makes a much better stitch because it's hopping, but at the very moment that it's taking a stitch, it's holding the fabric firmly. Uh, the danger is that if it's hopping at the point that you're moving the ruler and the ruler is a thin ruler, like a rotary cutting ruler and not one of these nice thick rulers like this one, which is a long arm ruler, okay, which is quarter inch thick, you could find that your ruler has gone underneath the foot and you don't want that. Um, that can end up with very fairly, I won't say catastrophic, but not ideal situation if the needle then comes down on your ruler. That can end up with a really um, bad situation. So the bad situation can mean that your, your timing gets knocked out. And that means that we have to fix it for you, which is okay. We can fix it, but you probably won't have a machine until we've fixed it. So you really just want to use the right rulers. Long arm rulers, quarter inch thick, don't use the thin ones. That's the simple situ situation. The Best one for starting out is the Handy Quilter Versatool. We are out of stock at the moment. Yep. We had a bit of a run on them because we just run the um, classes, but we'll be getting some more in stock. Uh, so the Handy Versatool is ideal. It's designed by Suzanne Highland, actually, whose um, husband, Mark, um, works at um, Handy Quilter Premier Needle Arts. And it's got a four inch half circle. It's got a nice gentle arc, great for continuous nine patch. And it's got a straight line and it's got a 90 degree curve and some very handy markings. So we like, like that one, particularly for beginners. So I've got some examples of quilts that we've done using that one. These are ones that Abigail did when we were doing some um, classes and things. So here we go. I'll just take you through this. So this one is done using that four inch. And this one is done using that 90 degree. And then this is done using the straight line. Okay, and there's the four inch again. So that's that one. We've got also, so that one you use the outside <clears throat> of it. That's like an outside ruler. The oval that I've got here, which is a nice cute little size, um, you can use, the, obviously you can use the outside, but the most important thing is that we can use the inside. And this is a bit like one of those party uh, crackers where you have like two metal rings fixed together and you think, how do you take those apart? You look at this, how you go, how do I get my foot inside there without contortion? And it's very simple when you know how. All you have to do, but you do have to have your needle up, but you can have the thread in the work. So I could have a stitch. Oh, let me just pick my thread up. I messed that up. Let me start again. And not to do it. Okay. Right. Take two. All right. There we go. So two or three stitches in place. I haven't stitched test this, have I? Oh, I did. Right. So I've got my needle up. And all I do is just go like this. So it slides through the top of the foot. There we go. That. Dead easy. If I put my needle down, and for alignment, if I'm going to sew an oval with this, my preference is to align the needle. And we've turned the lights down on this. Can I get that light back a bit over here? So that I can see. Is that okay there? Mm-hmm. Um, Normally, the Moxie has a little bit more lighting on it. But we've turned it down because it actually makes it really hard for you to see. But for me, stitching, I actually can't see where the needle is right now. Uh, there's a, etch lines are on the underside of the ruler. And that's important because if you have them on the top side, you will have, um, as Bella said this week, parallax. So the other thing is you don't really want that gap anywhere important. If you've got everything meeting in this middle point, it's better to have the gap on the far side where your eye is not going to be drawn to it so much. And I remember Abigail was saying at the classes that when she was talking to Jane Halprick, who's one of the handy quilter educators about how to kind of avoid any bumps and stuff, Jane's advice was go, don't go too slow. If you go too slow around that, you're more likely to get a bump. 
settings wise on the Moxie, let's just talk about settings for ruler work. This is just the setting I had when I turned the machine on because we, um, we were doing classes. So on the Moxie, I'm gonna use my minus and plus to go into settings. I'm in C, which is cruise, fine, but let's just discuss which cruise setting. So in cruise, so select it and select it again. This is what it's going to show when it's stationary. That's too high. This is probably was set for either pantographs or micro quilting. So for ruler work, I just want it to go up and down slowly when I pause. I don't want it to do too many stitches, otherwise I get like short stitches. I'm happy with 50, so I'm gonna go with that. 11 stitches per inch, 50, okay? I also want it to stop in the needle down position. The blue arrow tells me it's gonna do that. Okay, happy days. Right, so I'm just gonna do this oval, holding the ruler in a way that means it doesn't move in that direction, sorry, in this direction or in that direction is, is good. Plus, I've put on the underside handy grip, which is the sort of like sandpaper stuff. So here we go. All right, and just keep them going. And one tip I gave um, to a few people at the class was, when you get to about this point here, like about the nine o'clock position if I'm going uh, anti-clockwise, I'm kind of making sure that I haven't shifted away from my real kind of key point here. Because if I'm coming back to there and I've kind of moved this around to here, I can sort of adjust and ease that in if necessary. I don't want to make a big adjustment, but I could make small adjustments so that I come back to my starting point. Okay, so that's the oval. That's like an inside ruler. The other kind of rulers that we've got. You've got a couple of samples of using that ruler as well, Liz, haven't you, somewhere? What, the oval? <clears throat> yes. Yes. So it's, a, it's a lovely little ruler, that it one. It is. We did it, um, exercises at the class. Yeah. So this, <clears throat> I don't know where the... Let me just see if I can quickly You've grab. You've got that one though. Huh? Sorry? Okay, just, just show that one. I was going to do the one without. That's okay. That's the one that's a header for this class. So that's the um, oval ruler. And then I've just used um, it to go from the outside to the in and back again all the way around. I use the Cindy Needham stencils, which are the, um, <clears throat> The ultimate stencil, which is really good for marking. I've got, I've got so many things around the frame, I can get back. Right, so I used that to mark my initial lines. And I can't remember what I did to mark. I think I just eyeballed it because I could see I got some a little bit wrong down here at the bottom. But you know, you never point out your mistakes. I got that wrong. Um, <clears throat> okay, right, so that was that one. Then we've got, oh, this is another one. This is one Abigail did, which is all, that's the, I can't tell, they're so good, I can't tell which is the top and which is the bottom. This is oval, that's just the oval ruler. And the thing to note about this, which is quite clever, is that this is part of an oval ruler. And we really try to emphasis, emphasis, emphasize this to people that, you don't have to use the whole part of a shape. This is just the shapes of the ruler. This is quilted with more detail. You can see we've got, you know, Abigail's added scrolls. She's added some free motion filler. She's added some in, you know, interesting details through some straight lines that's, and some little squiggles. So that's all done using that ruler. Amazing, isn't it? Very effective. Yep, one ruler. Okay. Um, you can. Oh, this is. Um, yeah, here's a great example with straight lines. So, straight line and grids and double lines. Lovely, Laurie Tigner. Fantastic. Hi, Laurie, if you're watching. Um, she might be watching on catch up, but she might be with the grandchildren because she's got. Lovely grandchildren. These double lines, so effective. Beautiful ruler work. And look how that looks. A double close border. How gorgeous is that? 
And look at this. This is like a um, small ruler. Just move. That's not the best example. But like the small ruler, one by six. Perfect for that. So those stitch lines, just to get a sense of scale. Yes. They're mostly, they're only around a one millimeter apart, those stitch lines. So she's used clearly a very fine thread here. Yeah. But the effect of that is incredible. Yeah, so I, I asked Laurie how she'd done it. I mean, I know mine's not as good, but when I, I did something, yeah, hers is really good. I'm not gonna show mine. So these, this is, <laughs> this is, put mine away. Um, this is done, and she she basically said she just literally just moved it. Not you don't need to measure it. You don't use this. You just move it along, okay? Um, because you don't want it to grip. So that's really useful to know. Uh, that's that one. What else was going to show you? Um, <clears throat> now you can did this uh, with some Jamie Wallen rulers these really big arcs and you can make bigger ones. I think like that is bigger than the circle was just by kind of like making it bigger. Uh, double rulers, double lines, two, two threads through one needle there and back, really thick lines. One thing to note, these little ears that you've got are very, very useful. Mini scallop ruler, I'll show you some examples of this, but these, these ears are very useful because you stitch this and then you move along, that's going to sit on the, the line you've just stitched. These, and always look at the lines on your ruler. When you look at these and you're a beginner, and it's the first time you've ever picked up a ruler, they make no sense whatsoever. But as over time, you'll pick them up and you think, ah, oh. so you'll have a light bulb moment where you look at it and you think, oh, that's actually quite useful. Now I understand. But that line there, the line, the distance between that edge and that is a quarter of an inch. This says half. And you're thinking, what? Because, of course, the center of your needle is down here. So the, 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 the most useful number is the fact that that is a half an inch, half an inch, because that's what you're actually going to sew. When you put that on there, that is going to give you a half inch. So that's why they put half an inch on it. Otherwise, you'd have to each time calculate it. So it says half an inch. That's what you're going to sew. Three quarters of an inch, one inch, one and a, half, one and a quarter, etc. Okay. Uh, rotating rulers. Uh, let's just show you rotating rulers. So <coughs> rotating rulers. Um, well, this kind of thing. This, your your foot is actually going. Actually, this isn't. Is this a rotating one? Spinning wheel. It's so long since I use this one. Let me get the example out and work it out. Yes, here it is. <clears throat> so, can I move this over here? Yeah. So this ruler is called Spinning Wave. Yeah. Bring a little Morning, bit. Judy. You're, are you on holiday? Who's Judy, that? not long until we install your machine, Judy. You're in Mudderford Quay, is that um, down near Bournemouth somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, unless there's another place called Mudderford. Just a bit too thick. So if I just lay that on there, we'll just see. Liz, you say, Liz Marshman, you have that oh, yeah. ruler and it's your go-to ruler when doing line work. Which, which ruler is that you're talking about, Liz? This mini scallop. Mini scallop. Maybe. Probably. I would think so, because that is, it's, a, it's just such a handy ruler. Um, I have got some more examples of that. Yeah, so this, this one is the one where you can kind of, you, you sort of just do it like this, like that. Obviously, you don't tip it up like that. And then you come back and you do it like that. So yes, it, it is Liz it's confirmed. Sort of, it's the yeah, mini, scallop. mini scallop. You know, when, for when, the straight line side, which yes. is interesting. So it's called mini scallop. Well, it's called mini scallop, and we've got some lovely examples on that first one. Let's just show you. Here's the examples. 
I know I'm dotting around a bit. It's just what I'm doing today. So this is mini scallop, mini scallop examples, that one. Here's the mini scallop as a mini scallop. So mini scallop, you always build up when you're doing mini scallop. I tried to demo this on um, one of those TV shopping channels. Failed. Never try and do a live program unless you've actually really practiced it. There we go. That's, a lo that's lovely. And look how nice that one is. That's done using this ruler. Point and curve. And that one. All of those. And then, this is all Abigail. And look how nice that is. Filled in with different ways. Mini scallop. So somebody said that a, I think this, this one here, this uh, ruler, mm. very good for doing the stems for feathers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that too. And it makes, makes it consistent if you're doing a, a number of different Absolutely. stems on a quilt. Absolutely. That's a very good point. Yeah. Thinking about stems for feathers, this would be very small. Stems for feathers, not good. That's very, very hard. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want anything too, uh, I'm going to say aggressive. An aggressive curve is not a good curve for a feather. But you don't want any aggression in your curves. Um, so other things I was going to show, we're nearly, nearly out of time. But um, this was one that, um, I think Angela Walters did this on one of her programs. Wiggle Wave. We were out of stock of it anyway, I don't know why. But Wiggle Wave. Isn't that fun? It kind of, I think that's be really fun to do, wiggle wave. Um, another useful one that a lot of people like is the multi clamshell, because obviously you can do a lot with clamshell, but it's the fact that it's the size of it. It makes it, makes it really easy to hold. I mean, that's tiny, isn't it? But that's really nice. Uh, this one. Jade spinning wheel. This is typical of the ones where you actually have a little pin, little pin, and a jigsaw. This is designed by Leonie West, so this is kind of like a bit like the Westerly, because Leonie West used to run Westerly. And I've got an example of that here. That's that one. I just stuck a feather in the middle of it which I'm not quite sure worked, but anyway. And that's another spinning one, which was similar to that, that I did on a sit down. And two more here, two more examples. This is just versatile. And just showing with a very simple versatile, you can do something as simple as that in like a nine patch just with that. And instead of allowing the nine patch to dominate, you create a design that goes across your blocks. Final one, that's a Debbie Brown sample that she left for us, thank you Debbie, which is a sample that she did when we were at Festival of, Festival of Quilts. Um, oh gosh, 2017 probably. 2017, I think, 2018, maybe, which was a class that she ran using the Versatile. Now, we have got a special offer, haven't we, Pete? We better talk about that. Should we talk about the special offer? Yeah. Let's talk Go about ahead. It's very straightforward. It's really straightforward. This week. I said to Pete, what should we do for the special offer? And he, he knew that um, it's been quite a busy week. He said, let's do something simple you'll remember. No, you didn't say it quite like that. 10% off. Rulers. Just 10% off rulers. And the sure foot. So if you haven't got a sure foot and you'd like a sure foot, particularly if you've got a moxie, um, it's 10% off the sure foot. And it's 10% off any of the rulers. Simple this as. week. This week. Till 11 a.m. next weekend. It's a it's thing that I can set up on the, on the website because we're not here next weekend. We're not. No, I've got a wedding. But you know, Pete, we've also got a wedding next, the week after. Mm -hmm. So we're not here for two weeks, are we? We're not going to be back. Isn't that on the Friday? It is, but we're not back, are we? Don't know. Do you think? We'll have to, uh, we'll have we'll to have see. To confirm we, that. 
We might be back, because I think it's the wedding's on the Friday, isn't it? But we might have to hot foot it back here to be with you at 11 a.m. We're, we're doing photography at the wedding. We're not drinking or anything. No, we won't be drinking. Um, so that's it from us and the beautiful quilts and the beautiful moxie and rulers. And we will be announcing some classes for September very soon. Um, Abigail and the other potential teachers that I'd love to have do some classes here. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. Open days, try before you buy, all that kind of stuff. It's been a really busy period, so we're just going to kind of regroup because we've got other, some other things happening in the next week or so. Probably in the next couple of weeks, we will be putting that together so that you can book some really exciting classes, different ones, ones we haven't done before. Great. Uh, so we're not here next week. Don't turn up. We're not here. Uh, whatever, whatever else you guys are doing, have a fun time. It's Father's Day in the UK tomorrow. So uh, for those of you who will be visiting your dads or your granddads, or your great granddads, or with your grandchildren, whatever, um, we hope that you have a lovely day. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to visit mine tomorrow, which is wonderful. So we'll be with my whole family tomorrow. Um, I haven't told Pete yet. But you're playing cricket, aren't you? <clears throat> no, it's rained off. Okay. All right. We'll sort that out in a bit. We obviously haven't discussed that. <laughs> whatever you're doing tomorrow, whatever you're doing over the weekend, have a wonderful time quilting. And we look forward to seeing you possibly in two weeks, but we'll let you know. Don't forget the, the ruler offer um, and choose from the fantastic selection of rulers we've got. Didn't mention circles, but we've got these lovely circles too. So fantastic selection. We've just given a few, you a few to look at. Um, there's loads to choose from. There's videos on our website too, so you can actually see them in action even before you buy them. Check out the videos, check out our website, and we'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye now. <laughs>